So here we have the instrument for the city streamer. And as you can see, we have some special gauges here. And uh, this is not the normal <laughs> RPM gauge either, because you have the green mark all the way up to 5000 RPMs. And then you have some charging cable here and uh, some other stuff and uh, i mean this is probably really really rare so um, i am just in the planning stage here so i have this display here that will indicate the driving state and uh, the state of charge and uh, if i am using uh, the one pedal drive and stuff like that and my plan is to install this later on in this instrument here, but uh, I have not decided if I should remove the clock here or if I should remove the state of charge or battery indicator here or battery gauge. Um, I really would like to have this in working condition later on. I have bought some resistors to build my own voltage divider. So I, uh, together with an ESP device, can have this analog gauge to work later on but as i said there this is the early planning stage so i am just thinking here all right very welcome everyone to this volkswagen golf city streamer weekly update again and i have been really really busy this week and especially today i have actually not even put in one single screw to this car today so I have been at a local airfield and uh, done some service job to one of the airplanes there and it's always fun to do some stuff that I don't usually do. So first of all I am now finished with all the wiring there. So I have now repaired everything and also wrapped all the wires in this cloth tape that I am loving so much. So now it looks really good again and I have organized everything here in the engine bay. And um, I have to say that it was pretty hard to make this look really nice because back in the days they didn't have that uh, organized uh, wiring uh, like they have today. I mean if you look in an engine bay in a modern car today it looks so nice. Every cable are laying flat there and uh, straight to the components and uh, it's not really like that in uh, those old cars so uh, i struggled a bit there to make it look pretty nice anyway So um, I think that it looks pretty much as it did when it left the factory there. Uh, and then I also cleaned all the cable ties and all the grooments and the rubber stuff that will be into the firewall here. So it will look nice. And those plastic cable ties they are really hard to come over these days so i cleaned them really really well and they are now looking just fantastic but there was sadly some of them that did break there And I think that I will leave those long plastic uh, parts for now. Uh, they have done that from the factory when they produced the car. So I don't think that it looks so good. By the way, those cable ties, they are reusable. You can open it up how many times you want there. That's just fantastic. <laughs> you will not do that with modern cable ties. Uh, however, it will be great to have the length there because I probably need to open them up and insert uh, some more cables later on. 
so that's why I haven't cut them down yet. Leave a comment down in the comment section if you want me to leave it like they are now or if you want it to be shortened when everything is done because this is how it looked when it left the factory long back ago. Uh, however, uh, I decided to spare the old uh, control unit for the heater. It was an old petrol heater uh, when this car uh, was produced and uh, I decided to go with an electric one. I really thought a long time there that I was going to use a diesel heater. You know, these cheap ones type uh, uh, Webasto cockpits that uh, are very, very cheap to buy uh, now. But in the last minute there I changed my mind and uh, went with this electric one that uh, I still haven't got yet. But uh, when I have it I will install it in the engine bay here of course. And yeah that is pretty much what I have done here. I really wish that I had more time this day but it's Saturday today and I will now have the whole Sunday here almost because I have to do some editing for you guys. But anyway I really hope that uh, I have some hours left over there. Okay, that's for now. Let me know what you think about this uh, instrument, by the way. Which one here do you think that I uh, shall remove? Should I uh, remove the clock or uh, should I remove the state of charge gauge here? Uh, I cannot use this this summer because I don't have that time to create that voltage divider and uh, having this one to work. I'm pretty sure about that because I want to drive the car and I now have this little display that will give me all of that information. Anyway, so um, personally I think that I will uh, remove the uh, battery indicator there and save the clock for this year and then uh, see what I will come up with. Maybe I will change this RPM gauge to another one that will have some kind of, uh, I think it's the temp, temp gauge uh, they will have here or the fuel gauge and uh, then install this display in this RPM gauge. Uh, I have not decided that. Leave a comment down below what you think will be best. And, uh, maybe I changed my mind. But as it is right now, I probably will change this um, uh, battery indicator out for this display for so long and uh, then later on install this in another place. Alright guys, that was everything for this weekly update. Thank you so much for stopping by and uh, watching this video. Leave a comment down below as I said, give me a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much guys, I really appreciate it. All right. That was everything. See you next week. Take care and goodbye.